Yo guys, what's going on? I'm back once again with the CSS video, Lesson 21, so let's all get busy -o. That was awesome, right? <laughs> anyway, in uh, this lesson we're going to talk all about first and last child, pseudo classes. That's coming right up. <laughs> okay, so hopefully my rapping's not put you off and you're still watching. If you are, thank you very much. Okay, so first of all, I want a quick recap on the last lesson, and we said that in the last lesson, dynamic pseudo classes can be used to target behavioral states of an element. Now, this might be the hover state, or the active state, or the visited state. They're the three most common, I would say. And this can be on any element, but primarily it's used for links, or buttons, or anything that's a bit more interactive on your web page. So, in this lesson, I want to talk more about structural pseudo classes and how they can help us target complex structural elements that we wouldn't normally be able to do with ordinary selectors. So I'm going to jump back into the, go, uh, the code and see you guys there. Wow. All right, guys, so here I am back in the HTML and we're back on the articles page here and I've changed it up just a little bit. I've got some lorem ipsum dummy text in here. We've got three paragraphs, sorry, four paragraphs. And in the final paragraph, we've got a little link tag saying, if you want to read more, click here. And it's the same for both articles. Okay, so what we're going to talk about in this lesson is the first and last child pseudo classes. Now, what does that mean? Well, we already know that children are elements that are nested within parent elements. So let's take this article tag for an example. And by the way, this article tag is a new HTML5 semantic uh, element. And I'm going to do probably a course in the future about HTML5 and those kind of semantics. So stay tuned for that. For now, don't worry too much about it. Just take this as the parent element. This is the one that's containing all these p tags. Now, the p tags are children elements, okay? So we've already learned that. And um, these are the kind of relationships we can build upon using structural pseudo classes. So, say we want the first child of this parent. Now, the first child would be the first one that comes directly beneath that parent. So that would be this p tag here. This is the first, chi first child, second child, third child, and this would be the last child or fourth child. Okay, and it's the same for both. So we can target the first child and the last child directly without adding any classes on. So we don't have to get anti-semantic or anything like that. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing we do, like any other pseudo classes, first of all, have our normal selector and in this case we're saying p we want to go after the p tags and at the minute this is selecting all of the p tags on the page okay um, and we can be more specific we can say article p because we know about descendant selectors this is a descendant of article and now it's just grabbing the article selectors which is still all the p tags on this particular page anyway that would be our normal selector for the p tags so how do we add these first and last child uh, pseudo classes on? Well, like all pseudo classes, we have the colon to say that there's a pseudo class coming up, and then we put the keyword. Now, pretty self-explanatory. All it is is first hyphen child. That there, my friends, is going after this first child here because it's the first child of this parent element. So now we can style this one on its own without hitting any of these. And I want the first paragraph to kind of catch your eye. I want it to be bold. So we're going to say font weight, bold. Okay, and that's all there is to it. We've got our pseudo selector here, our pseudo, uh, our structural pseudo collector of first child. And it's getting this first child and styling it bold. All right, so likewise, we can do a last child uh, pseudo class. And we do it in the same way. We'll say article P, last child and then do our declaration. And this one here is a sentence telling us to click here for more information. And I want this to stand out as well. This time I'm gonna color it red. And this might look pants, my friends, but I don't care. I just wanna use this as an example. So I'm gonna save that off now, and I'm gonna open it up in a browser. Google Chrome. All right, and there we go. You see, we've got these P tags here. This is an article and this is an article. And the first one, first child is bold and the last child is red with exception to that link because don't forget, we've got default browser styles overriding that inherited style of red. So the browser is coloring, coloring this blue. And it's the same here. First child, bold, last child, red. So cool. That's how to use first and last child pseudo elements. If you have any questions about these whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can with all of those. 
And if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, uh, comment, share, whatever. And I'll see you guys in the next one where we're going to look at some more structural pseudo classes.